Hello, my name is Linda Lox. I am a pediatric epileptologist at Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago. I'm here to talk about SUDEP in Dravet syndrome. SUDEP is sudden unexpected death in epilepsy. This is death that occurs abruptly without warning or other apparent medical causes in people with epilepsy. Everyone has a risk of sudden unexpected death. However, this risk is 40 times more frequent in patients with epilepsy than for people in the general population. In fact, it's the leading cause of death in patients with intractable epilepsy, accounting for 40 to 50% of the mortality. SUDEP rates are estimated to be 1 in 5 per 1,000 person years. SUDEP in children was previously thought to be less frequent than adults. However, there are two recent population studies where there are similar rates of SUDEP in children as adults. People with childhood onset epilepsy, the median age of SUDEP was 25 years. Looking specifically at Dravet syndrome, we'll look at two studies that evaluate mortality in SUDEP in this patient population. The first is by Cooper and all, published in Epilepsy Research in 2016. They had 100 patients with Dravet syndrome and found the mortality rate 15.8 per 1,000 person years, which is equal to a 15% risk of death 10 years after the diagnosis of epilepsy. SUDEP was found to be the most common cause of death across ages of two to 20 years, accounting for 59% of the deaths. The Dravet syndrome specific SUDEP rate in this study was 9.32 per 1,000 person years. The second study was from a Japanese cohort. They had 59 patients with Dravet syndrome and their age at the time of death ranged from 13 months to nearly 25 years. The three major causes of mortality in this patient population was SUDEP at 53%, followed by acute encephalopathy with status epilepticus in 36%. There was a SUDEP peak at one to three years with a second smaller peak at 18 years of age and older. No prognostic factors were identified for the patient population that did die of SUDEP. Why do patients with Dravet syndrome appear to have a high risk of SUDEP? SUDEP risk factors for general epilepsy is as follows. Pharmacoresistance, increased frequency or recent history of generalized tonic-clonic seizures, lack of treatment with anti-seizure medications or subtherapeutic levels of drugs, anti-seizure medication polypharmacy, as well as frequent changes in these medications, epilepsy of long duration, and intellectual disability. As you can see, patients with Dravet syndrome have most of these different factors. But there is a question, is the SCN1A gene mutation itself somehow contribute to the pathophysiology of SUDEP in patients with Dravet syndrome? We will turn our attention now to mechanisms of SUDEP in Dravet syndrome, looking at cerebral shutdown, cardiac dysfunction, and respiratory dysfunction. Cerebral dysfunction is based on the flattening of the EEG immediately after a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. It is felt that this post-ictal seizure suppression causes a generalized cessation of brain electrical activity and then leads to the fatal cardiac respiratory or arousal response. There are cases of SUDEP reported in epilepsy monitoring units that have described this cessation of EEG activity preceding the fatal cardiac or respiratory arrest. And there are mouse models of SUDEP that have deleted serotonin neurons, which are critical in the regulation of breathing and wakefulness. In Dravet syndrome mice, a secondary postictal cerebral shutdown was observed during lethal bradycardia, coinciding with the time of cessation of all movements, including respirations. The second mechanism of SUDEP is possible cardiac dysfunction. Cardiac arrhythmias have been suggested as potential risk factors for SUDEP, and they are observed during generalized tonic-clonic seizures or focal seizures in humans and animal studies. In addition, genes responsible for cardiac channelopathies are expressed in both heart and brain. SUDEP and Dravet syndrome mice 
was noted with an ictoprolonged bradycardia and associated ventricular electrical dysfunction due to hyperactivity in the parasympathetic nervous system in one study as seen. But more research is needed to fully understand these mechanisms. In addition, there are recent studies in patients with Dravet syndrome that have not identified any significant cardiac arrhythmias. The final mechanism of SUDEP and Dravet syndrome is respiratory dysfunction. Respiratory dysfunction may be from asphyxiation or a central apnea, but it is known that there are seizure associated respiratory difficulties from hypoventilation or apnea that have been witnessed in SUDEP cases. In addition, it is felt that there have been serotonin dysfunction in the brainstem that can lead to respiratory dysfunction after a seizure, as well as adenosine dysfunction. In SCN1A mice, they were found to pass away after spontaneous and heat-induced seizures due to a central apnea followed by progressive bradycardia. So any of the possible three mechanisms for SUDEP in the general epilepsy population may be an etiology for patients with Dravet syndrome as well. So what can be done? Recommendations to parents really at this point in time are focused on trying to decrease the risk factors in SUDEP. So I tell my families to have your children take your seizure medications constantly and at the right dose, to work with your physician to obtain the best seizure control possible. Of course, in this patient population, they'll be balanced by limiting the medication adverse side effects to avoid seizure triggers as much as possible, and to consider a seizure alert monitor, although these have never been proven in medical studies to decrease SUDA. Nevertheless, I refer the patients to the Danny Did Foundation, which is an organization that is focused on educating families and physicians about SUDA. In addition, on their website, they do have a tab for devices for seizure monitoring and detection. Thank you very much for the Dravet Syndrome Foundation for asking me to talk about this subject.